So here we are about a month from the election and things are changing. Dynamic change is just over the horizon for our entire country. And New York is trying to select, are we going to stay the course with uh, Governor Cuomo or are we going to change course? Now, the Democrats are basically, they have, they, they are Democratic Socialists now. The Republicans... I think are just the status quo is state by state. You'd have to look at each. But in New York, there is another choice. A guy who seems wildly qualified for the job. His name is Larry Sharp. He's a teacher and guest instructor who has taught English management business at Yale, Columbia, John Jay College. Uh, He's a Marine Corps veteran. He, his professional life, his mother was having some issues and he's like, I got to find, help her find a job. I'm going to start a trucking company. He did. It was a big success. And then he's a serial entrepreneur from there. Larry Sharp, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Glenn. Appreciate it. So Larry, let's talk about um, what it means to be a libertarian in New York. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually a great thing, believe it or not. I mean, to be forward with you, it's the only it's the only party that actually crosses the line. Right yes. now, we have a situation to where Republicans don't want to vote for Democrats, Democrats don't want to vote for Republicans, and we have seventy percent of New Yorkers who actually don't vote. This is actually learned helplessness. It's an issue where people are saying it doesn't matter. In fact, most New Yorkers, if you ask them, they're thinking about leaving the state. We have over a hundred thousand leaving every single year. Over a million have left in the past eight years. You know, I will judge my term a, by a very simple number, and that is, are there still 100,000 New Yorkers leaving every year? If so, I failed. If not, I'm winning. I'm a business guy, and customers matter. And as a governor, my customer is my population. Am I drawing people into my state, or am I pushing them away? And right now, we're pushing them away. That's what's happening right now. The Democrats have basically run our state on a statewide level for about 16 years, give or take. So if they were going to fix this state, they would have already fixed it. The Republicans, they've been watching this for 16 years. So my question to any Republican is, where's their plan? Uh, Where's their movement? Doesn't exist. I've been doing this for one year. And in one year, I have both a plan and a movement. They have nothing. They have the other guy is evil. I have actual ideas. I am the only non-establishment candidate in this race, which is why we can win. And you've seen it. Non-establishment is the answer. Left or right, it's the answer. And I'm one who can actually, you know, I can give the right what they want and the left what what they want as long as you don't enforce your will on others. And that's a libertarian. Amen. I I will tell you, um, Larry, I I think that the, the libertarianism um, it is really dicey because sometimes there's libertarians who you're not libertarian enough. Well, wait, isn't time. that isn't that the point? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're supposed all the time. To, yeah, all the time. Um, and and there are those libertarians um, that I think the last candidate for president was still kind of big state on many issues. The great thing about libertarianism is it allows the individual to be as socially liberal as you want, but it also requires you to be fiscally responsible because it's turning things back to where they belong in the hands of the people. So tell yeah, me, look, go ahead. In New York State specifically, we don't want one city running the entire state. And this is common in many areas, right? New York's New York State is so varied. We have mountains as, as good as Colorado. I we know. have farmland as good as the Midwest. We have lakes, we have rivers, we have, the, we have Niagara Falls, we have New York City, the biggest city in the entire nation. We have it all in my state. How in the world can that be run by one city? It's impossible. I want to allow counties to be counties and regions to be regions and people to be people. And it's totally fine. The issue becomes, why do I want to enforce my will upon you? I want you to be as conservative or as liberal as you want to be. People tease me and say, Larry, you're from Queens. How do you know, you know what's right for upstate? I don't. That's the point. And guess what? You don't know what's right for me in Queens either. We're even. How about I I let you be you, you let me be me, and we can all be free together. What a concept. It can work. It has worked. That's our original idea. We just haven't done it in a long time. So, so Larry, tell me, day one, you're governor of New York. What do you do? There are several things I have to work on. And to be clear about this. 
when I win this thing, I, I can win this thing with about 30 percent or so of the vote because it's a five-way race in New York State, and we are a plurality state, not a majority state. So we don't require 51 percent. There's no the runoff. Cow. Whoever has the most, that's how New York State works. So I could actually win this thing with 30 percent. So it's, it's actually a winnable race. So assuming that I win this thing, I'm going to have 30 percent. 30 percent of the vote for a third party is a mandate that will shock everything. To be forward with you, Glenn, this is the most important single election in the entire nation. Not as a whole. There are many other things that work more importantly as a whole. But as one single election, if I come in first, it changes the entire nation overnight. It does. Not just for the Libertarian Party, but for any third party. Yeah, no, it this is... the duopoly. Yeah, this is... this. I think if people thought Donald Trump was ground-breaking, a Libertarian winning in New York... Uh, would 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 be an earthquake. I mean, it would just yes. change the political system overnight. Absolutely. It is that important. Even coming in second would shock people. But first would literally change the nation. It would give every third party a better chance. It would make better Democrats and better Republicans. Because right now, Republicans just have to talk about our protection of the Democrat. They don't have to worry about small business. They don't have to worry about smaller government. They don't have to worry about lower taxes. It's not important. It's just, I'll protect you from the evil left. And they'll let the same thing in return. They don't have to care about civil liberties. They're supposed to be, but they don't. They're supposed to. They just go, I'm going to protect you from the evil right. But when there's a third party there, when libertarians can point the finger and say, Democrats, what happened, what happened to civil liberties? Republicans, what happened to smaller government? Now they have to change. They have to be better. It will change how everything works. So day one is I have to recover from the shock. <laughs> there will be a massive, a massive culture shock within, within the, uh, the state and within the nation. But something else, I don't have a career to protect. I don't have people to pay back. I don't have that. So I can actually just do what I want, which is amazing. I'm assuming that I will be in court my entire four years. That's my assumption, and I'm fine with that. But I have to focus on several things. One, a complete reboot of education. Two, a complete reboot of how we mandate every local county to pay for things that the people don't want to pay for, a thing called unfunded mandates. That's how the Albany, which is our capital in New York State, and Washington, D.C., control every local county and take the power away from local governments. And next, I have to create a culture of transparency because the problem with local governments now is they're enforcing the king's will. So – they are not transparent. They are constantly being bullied. And I don't want the state government to be, I'm the king and I enforce my will. I want the state government to be, I will protect your rights of the individual against the local bully. Sounds that like you've read the Constitution. Uh, what is that? I don't know. Well, I don't yeah, know. I know. I know. It's, I'm not sure don't worry. It's an old, dusty, outdated document. There we go. Yes. New York mm-hmm. State, I think we threw it away a while ago. Yeah. Uh, but yes, that's my point. I want to make sure that, look, if we focus on the individual more, we will have better individual families, mm-hmm. better individual businesses, better individual people who are trying to you know, do their jobs, growth locally. You know, I want the local communities to provide more value to each community. We don't do that well in New York State at all. We have things called regional economic development uh, corporations, which Albany, which is our capital again, decides where the money is spent. And Albany decides where taxpayer money is spent within an individual county. How about instead the counties can start their budgets at zero so they can decide what they want? How about we add new ideas of volunteerism? How about the concept? I'll give you two interesting concepts. One, instead of me focusing on lowering taxes, how about I focus instead on raising money through ways other than taxation and through lowering spending? Here's one idea that does both of those. We have uh, bridges right now in New York State, and one of them is named the Mario Cuomo Bridge. We literally have an imperial bridge named after our royal family. That's embarrassing. Wow. How about instead that bridge is named the Staples Bridge or the, the Verizon Bridge or the Apple Bridge, and we can lease naming rights for the bridge. We retain the asset. Again, I'm a business guy. I'm not giving my asset up. I'm going to lease naming rights. No hybrid model that fails every time. Straight contractual. That's all. These are companies that are paying billions of dollars right now every year on marketing. They drop $20 million on a stadium name that's used on the weekends. I got a bridge you can name, and that bridge gets mentioned hundreds of times on every single day during rush hour in a 16-person, uh, 16-million-person metro area, and hundreds of thousands of cars pass it every single day. You will easily drop $50 million on that, if not more. I on love that. I don't, Texas, hang on just a second. Texas, New York's not going to listen to this guy. Texas, you should listen to this guy. This is a good idea. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But here's the best part. Now we have them deal with maintenance. 
again, we own it, so we still, it, we still inspect it. So damage is still our responsibility. Their job is just to repair it, right? They begin to repair it. What does that mean? We're not spending money on the repairs, lower spending. Not just that. Contracts don't come through Albany, less corruption. Someone else is spending, is spending it, so guess what? We'll actually fix bridges. Bridges right now in New York State collapse. We don't have enough money. These guys do. We'll actually have safer bridges, less money, and guess what? We can stop with tolls. In New York, in New York City, some bridges cost $15 I know. to cross. I know. If you're a truck driver, I know from being a truck driver, you pay by the axle. You're dropping 75 to 100 bucks to cross a bridge. Less money, less corruption, safer, better service, boom, we raise billions of dollars. This is just one idea, and there are many of them. No one else talks about them. This is what we have to work on in New York State. We can so, do that. So, Larry, you are you, – it's amazing to me how we are running headlong – just willing to give up everything that we have already, the, the freedoms that we have, and embrace democratic socialism. Yes. But we won't embrace this very American idea. How do you, how do you get the common sense Democrat and Republican who has been raised in New York, so their mentality is, I mean, this would sell in Texas. How do you get them in New York to see, it, guys, this this, this It's already this selling works. to be forward. The Republicans in New York have given up. I mean, they don't show up. Uh, the Democrats uh, think, I'm afraid, so let's just vote Democrat. The reality of it is, again, 70% of New Yorkers don't vote. Those who do vote, vote because of fear. We can't have fear be the reason why people vote. It's simply the wrong answer. Oh, man. But I would say that in reality, I'm trying to change this to make it so that people stop voting for the less of two evils and instead vote for someone. And it is working. I am actually using, if you've noticed, I'm using non-traditional media. Traditional media does not want to cover me, and polls don't want to deal with me. But non-traditional media is working, and I'm getting out there, and people are seeing me, they're responding to me, and this is what's working. The way to make this happen is through non-traditional media. And believe it or not, people are getting it. They actually like it. I hear all the time people say, Larry, I don't agree with everything you're saying, but you actually answer questions. You actually have a plan, and they love it, and that's what I say. And look, my plan may be faulty. Maybe they won't. We can't lease all the bridges. Maybe we can't raise $50 billion. Maybe we can only raise $30 billion. That's oh. still a win. Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm so happy with that. Let, let, let me ask you, can I hold you over for one more break? The Blaze Radio Network. On Demand.